so now finally we are coming to the final part of the session which is evaluation matrix for linear regression now evaluation matrix are very simple that same thing that you have used for basically making sure that your linear regression the same thing that you have used to choose the best possible line right when we had three lines by different real estate agents and we chose the best line the same technique we are going to use for measuring this for evaluating our regression models right so evaluation matrix is that uh, so obviously before we do that so first part is why doesn't the computer do it automatically and right? why shouldn't why should you kind of why should we be able we should evaluate it separately and kind of do this uh, why doesn't the machine learning algorithm already chooses the best line right uh, there are two parts to the answer one is what is the best line is something that you need to define right what is a, sometimes it could be in terms of as, I, as we talked about right it could be in terms of squared error right it could be sometimes in terms of absolute error it could be sometimes in terms of very different things and the second thing is as your models get more and more complicated right we need to input hyper parameters which basically say that you know uh, so we probably not very kind of we are not kind of touched upon on the concept of hyper parameters in this particular session but in the next lecture we will and that's when we will basically see that uh, uh, for us to kind of uh, work different combinations of hyperparameter, we will basically in this particular case for example you want to say that which model do you want to use do you want to use the one which uses gradient descent as a solver or you want to use the one which uses the uh, you know equation solving one as a solver right so there are two different ways to come to the basic solution now which one do you choose that's something you have to choose and those things that you choose are called hyperparameters. remember that parameters are the some are, uh, are the things that the model sorts out and finds out for itself Hyperparameters are the things that you have to input so which which of the methods that you use for solve, coming to the best possible values of parameters that's something in this case could be gradient diesel or it could be the other one which is the standard one and uh, depending on what you choose that that's a hyperparameter that you have to feed to the model and based on that hyperparameter now you want to compare which of this model gives you best performance right because in each cases uh, the model is basically going to come out with the best possible values of beta naught and beta one given those hyperparameters right given the fact that you're trying to solve it in this particular ways but it doesn't know that what are the all other different ways of solving right so you have to basically say that okay you know what use this method as solving for coming to the best possible values of theta naught and theta one use this uh, gradient descent method and tell me what is the best possible value of theta naught and theta one you can come up to and then you say okay you now use this particular way of solving and tell me what is the best possible value of theta naught and theta one you can come up with and then you see out of this best possible values of theta naught and theta one from this two different three different four different processes that have come out which is the one you would like to use now to do that you would basically again need to evaluate the lines that your different models have come up with right so that's why we need the concept of evaluation matrix right we have different methods different hyperparameters which basically would give you uh, different sets of theta naught theta one theta two values and you need to compare theta naught theta one theta two values across different techniques and that's why you need to evaluate which model is working with so now there are three different basic evaluation metrics that are used for for checking the goodness of it the first is mean absolute error root mean square error and residual value so mean absolute error is something that we have already discussed it's nothing but the in earlier case we were talk as we had mentioned in cost function we were taking the squared value of the target and the prediction and in absolute mean absolute error we take the absolute deviation right we take the modulus of the deviation and that's about it root mean square is nothing but the same concept where instead of taking this squared error just as it is we take the average of the squared error and then we take a root over it right so mean square error was the one where we take the where we take the mean of the squared errors and then root mean square is the one where we take the root of the mean of the squared error so now why are we squaring the residuals while taking a root residuals are actually the difference between actual values and predicted values and residuals can be uh, positive or negative right that's the reason why we squared it now because it's squared it so that we when we are squaring it we remember the whole point when we were with the error was 5000 we squared it to 20 it became kind of 25 million right so that's a huge number so to do that to kind of curve that we basically take a square root such that the order 
of error is basically of the same order of magnitude as the predictions right so if you are trying to make 20 whatever is your because while doing the error we are squaring it right so we need to kind of take a root of that as well so that the order of magnitude is basically um, preserved so that's why we are taking a square of the root mean uh, we are taking the square of the residuals and then the advantage of rms when we could take the absolute difference the th that idea is very simple if you are taking root mean squared you are kind of punishing your model a lot more because you are just you are kind of taking the error and then squaring it up so that's why uh, it severely punishes large differences in prediction right uh, and that's something that is critically uh, that is the difference between rmsc and mean absolute error in mean absolute error you just take the difference and take a modulus of it in case of rms you take the difference and square it and hence if there's a very large value a uh, very large deviation then you square that and that's a huge number and then your rmsc error shoots up and that's why you don't you if you want your model to be kind of you want to kind of penalize your model for very large prediction errors then you want to use rmsc as the evaluation metric if you want to not do that you want to use probably mean absolute error as your metric so now what is the final measure of error which is r square r square is nothing but the measure of your proportion of variability in the response that is explained by the regression model so earlier when we when the blood content model the one that we had talked about in the first starting of the session is fitted uh, using a linear model the r square was 0 0.94 what does that 0 0.952 mean this means that 95% to 95.2% of the variability in the data given to us is explained by a linear model which is good right so basically there's a variability in your response right so if you're trying to predict house prices your housing prices are varying now you obviously have to explain that variability using your linear regression model your linear regression model basically says that hey your area is low that's why your price is low if your area is higher price is higher right so you are kind of trying to explain for the variability in your target variable by using independent features and fitting a model on top of it now how much of that variability is uh, explained by the model and how much of it is not explained by the model is something measured by r square so if your r square obviously if it's one that means 100 percent of the variability in your data is explained by a linear regression model whereas if it is very low that means probably the variability in your model is something that you are not able to explain using linear regression model so how do you measure this how do you get to this r square error is something that we are going to talk right now so in rmsc we have already been introduced to the idea of squared residuals which is also called the sum of error of sum of squares this is something which is a cost function right you know this already there's a cost function this is basically the squared error sum of squared error the same thing y minus y prediction square this is sum of squares additionally there are two more terms which are total sum of square sst which is nothing but the square difference between actual value and the mean of our data set so what this is basically nothing but your standard deviation right so standard deviation square this is called variance right so variance is nothing but sum of y minus y bar square right so this is something which is again something you're familiar with the only thing that you're not familiar with in this case is this particular thing which is regression which is nothing but the variance of your predictions from the mean right so in this for the ss total is nothing but the variance of your actual values and regression is variance of your regression values but not from their mean but from the mean of the target variable right so keep that in mind this is y hat the, the deviation of y from the y predictions not from the mean of y predictions but from the mean of the target value right the same target value that is used so this is ss total is basically the deviation of y from the mean of y and this is the deviation of y predictions from the mean of y itself not the mean of prediction of y right just just keep that in mind so this is the ss regression so r square is nothing but ss regression by ss total which is if you kind of do this calculation you will see that it comes out to be one minus sse by ss total so this is a derivation that you can do at your own end at ledger so i'm kind of the formula is out here for you to kind of have a look at it uh, so that's it right so r square basically is something that you have uh, you are normally using for basically saying that how much of your model how much of the variability in the data is explained by your model right so if, if your model basically 
if your basic data varies from say you know very small values to large values and you're able to explain all of that saying that you know what when the area is low you kind of have this low values when your area of your house is high you have tend to have high values and your model kind of covers all of that that's awesome and versus for example if you have a lot of high variable lot of variability and your model is not able to explain all of that so even in low values there's a lot of variability in high values also there's a lot of variability in your data uh, your model is not doing a good job that's when you have a r score which is probably very low so that's the intuition and that's the end of the session here so we have understood this is the first session in machine learning so there's a lot of concept i know that you have kind of been overloaded with but don't uh, i would i would strongly recommend to kind of go through the lectures once again kind of if you're doing the physical lectures as well so kind of take your time out and do them very carefully the concept is very simple to understand actually that there's the straight line that you need to fit uh, the only thing that you need to be aware of this case is how do you kind of go about fitting that straight line so the concept to do a fit a straight line you know that in case you're doing it in two dimension you just need two parameters which is beta naught and beta one if you're doing in multiple dimensions you need more parameters how do you choose those parameters you basically say that hey i'm going to choose that particular line which gives me the minimum deviation of the predictions from the target whichever line whichever set of parameters gives me that line right which gives me the least uh, deviations i'm going to choose that particular line now how do you come up with that particular set of parameters you could have two different ways to come up with that you could use gradient descent or you could use your normal way of solving linear equations right whatever way you come up with your job is to come up with the best possible set of those parameters once you come up with that that's it now you can use that particular line to predict prices for any any given independent features right now as we said independent could be in terms of if there's one particular variable which is independent that is called univariate if you have multiple features that are independent that's called multivariate and that's about it right there's nothing more to it then we talked about assumptions in linear regression where we talked about the different assumptions that error should be uh, normally distributed and uh, all of those errors all of those assumptions the only thing to keep in mind is I've told then also is that assumptions are something that doesn't say basically that your model is gonna if your assumptions are flouted right so if there's a multi collinearity in the data that doesn't say that your model should not run you cannot run linear regression on that data it just says that probably uh, in that form if you're doing as it is linear regression is not going to do a good job if you probably remove those five dependent features and just go around with the rest of the features you can probably do a better job that's what it says so assumptions of linear regression keep that in mind and then we finally talked about evaluation metrics which are basically the same things as we had done for cost function the same ones almost uh, and then we talked about residual error uh, as well and that's about it that's the entire context of this lecture that we have talked about today take a bit of time go through it um, you know patiently because this is your first lecture in ml uh, it's gonna take some time to kind of wrap your head around it but once you do that the rest next part of the journey is going to be extremely um, extremely peaceful for you guys thanks thanks a lot guys let's now head over to the assignments log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates